Like I said before in the beginning, <laughs> we need to build relationship because relationship is an experience. Do you want to experience covenant? The covenant is a fact. The relationship is an experience. It's something that you have to choose to do. That's with relationship with marriage. That's with family. That's with whatever. And I find ourselves, it's a choice that we got to make to have relationship. Amen? I can choose to be angry or I can choose to build a relationship. I can choose to say, oh, thank God, I'm doing everything the Word says, everything the Bible says. I'm going to do everything this, this Bible says. I'm just going to do it. But if I don't have a relationship, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just building a religion. But when I have a relationship with covenant, I build a, 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 we are in the kingdom. We build the kingdom of God, and, and we move forward in that. How many are ready to really get into a relationship today? so that we can experience the presence of Jesus today, because the covenant never leaves us, the doctrine never leaves us, but the fact is to tap into the doctrine, to tap into the covenant, its only way is through relationship. And its only way is through the power of the Holy Spirit and experiencing Jesus, because I don't want to be married if I don't experience marriage, right? You've got to experience it. I, it's, I, 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 there's an awesome little kid here today. I, it's relationship. You connect to a child because of relationship. Wouldn't you agree? I, I, why have babies any other way? I mean, it, it does something to you, doesn't it? To raise your own child, it does something to you, doesn't it? To watch them grow up, it does something. It, 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 the relationship is what we need to grab a hold of today. Because today's message, I don't have it up there today, just because I thought you could write it down for a change. Who are you in the world today? Who are you to the world? Who are you to the world? Who are we to the world? And we have to grab a hold of who we are to the world. But I noticed one thing. I can watch the conference, and I went to T.D. Jakes, and I watched him. When I go live, I, I just go crazy. Like, it just, there's something with being in, 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 in 10,000 black people and being a white person there. <laughs> you, you talk to these black people, and you forget that you're white. You look at your hand, and you oh, shoot, I am white. <laughs> like, it's just like you forget about it completely because it, it's so amazing. You, you just... You just connect them as brothers and sisters. And, and it's when I shake my hand, I realize I'm different. <laughs> Until then, I don't. That's how, be, how great it is to be alive with something, right? You get the connection. And it's so great to watch things because I watch things all the time. But it's, there, there's some people that I watch, I just want to be alive. I want to feel the atmosphere of the crowd yelling yes and amen. I want to feel that crowd saying and stomping their feet and, and fighting together. I, I, I want to, that's what I want to be part of. And that's what I want you guys to be part of. It's so great to connect. It's so, people say, cyber church is the way to go. That's great if you can't make it out and you're stormed in, go for it. But the fact is, when you get together, when there's a vibe, if you want to call it that, and I'm not really, uh, it, there's, a, there's a presence together. You know, no matter what you think, I, I put out a vibe, and you can't argue the point. You might think it's atheist, you might think it's crazy, but the fact is there is a vibe coming out of me. There is energy coming out of me, because I am an energized person, amen? And you notice that when I move around. I mean, I, there's energy here, and you're going to start feeling the energy of what Jesus is doing through me. Peter walked down the streets and his shadow healed people. There was energy that came through the power of the Holy Spirit through Peter. Amen? There is energy in you. What are you doing with your energy? What are you doing? It's time to, the biggest thing I'm bringing back, and a lot of this stuff I stole from the conference, just so you know. Don't, don't, oh, George, Pastor George had a good message. Yes, I put it in my own words, but I mean, I'm stealing it so much. Man, but uh, that's, that's what it's for. That's why I go to these places is to steal or to, to borrow. You know, I go to that for that reason, right? Like, this, well, why go if I can't take nothing from it, right? Amen? Well, why, why come here if you can't take what you get here and bring it out there? And so the biggest thing was it's branching out. It's time to branch out. As soon as you don't branch out, as soon as you, you become somebody in containment, and when you come in containment, you become selfish, and you become somebody that you're not. So when you come to church, the reason for church is to be fulfilled so you can be who you're designed to be. The church is to come here and get anointed and get excited so you can bring the excitement out there. Amen? We need to get branching out. Yes, you need church. You have to have church because you need that fulfillment of Christianity. And you need fulfillment of sister and brother in Christ. You need that fulfillment. You need to have that. But it's time to understand that church is not just about healing. Church is about being filled so you can heal others to do things for others, so you can be you for others, amen? Yes, we create a safe environment here. We don't allow people to pray for each other a whole lot. It's because that's not the reason why you should be coming here. You should be coming here to be fulfilled so you can fulfill your sphere and influence out there. 
so that you can be powered up, so you can be excited up, so when you meet somebody and shake somebody's hand, they fall over in the power of God. <laughs> Amen? You, you need to grab a hold of the fulfilling that you can have here. Say, well, I, I don't get used here. Come on, we're a small church. We can't use everybody all the time. But, I, I don't, but the fact is, if you grab a hold of what you get here and you can use out there, you're going to see the presence of God released like never before in your life. Amen? I'm telling you, it's time to branch out. What about you? You want to branch out? Yes. One way of branching out <laughs> is we need to become digital missionaries. How many of you are on Facebook? Raise your hands. How many are on Twitter? How many are on Instagram? You need to start using that because you can become a digital missionary. If you don't feel, if you have something bubbling in you and you feel no, there's no place to put it, there is some place to put it. You just go. And you send it out in three seconds. In my case, over a thousand people get it. In your case, 100 people might get it. In your case, maybe 5,000 get it. Who, I don't know who you are. Uh, but whatever you get, you, you send it out. And, and you start ministering to people, and you become a each branching out. You can do stuff with what you have. If we don't grab a hold of what the enemy's using and redeem it back to God, the enemy's going to win the internet when we need to win it. We need to start branching out in every way and every form. What does branching out mean to me? When I see this branching out, it is not about coming against somebody on Facebook. <laughs> I'm, I just want to share my love for people. I don't want to go on there and try to find something to be critical about. Who cares if I don't understand it? He's trying their best. Be blessed. I'm, I'm not going to go type something out and say, Oh man, I totally disagree with you. You got that scripture all wrong. The fact is, I might have got it all wrong. Who knows? But when you reach out, is that you do out of your heart what God calls you to reach out. And when you do it out of the honesty of your heart, who cares what somebody else says? It is about God touching you and you touch somebody else. The biggest thing about reaching out, I find, as a digital missionary that I am, <laughs> and we want to put that into like, oh, like honesty, we need to start being digital. We need to start bringing things out quickly because God is moving quickly in 2014. Amen? And so what the biggest thing I do it's, I have a hard time putting it up because I know I'm not going to get a comment against it. I just know that. It's just going to happen. But I have learned some things through this conference, and the biggest course that I took is how to minister through social media. But God is moving. And people say, I don't have social media. Well, then don't do it. Do what you do. But a lot of you spend a lot of time on there because I know I follow you guys. <laughs> 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 I, I, I know. It, it's just you, you guys are spending time on it. Wouldn't you agree? Why not? And people say, I don't know what to share. Well, then share one of our videos. Share one of, one, one of different ministries, like Elevation. Go look at Elevation Church up and share all their videos. It's amazing videos. Elevation Church. Steve Furtick. Share. To share TJ. Do whatever. Just get it out there. Get the Word of God flowing and start branching out. Amen? I would say you should get ours first out there, but I don't want to be biased or anything like that, you know? But, <laughs> but you, you, we can walk into that place of saying, you know what? In spite of who I am, I can share what God is. I write that down. In spite of who you are, you can share what God is. You say, I'm not perfect at this. I, I, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I, I say, I do things on Facebook that most people shouldn't see. Who cares? Put something on there people should see. You can be a digital missionary. You can be a total... Uh, <laughs> or whatever, fill the blank, uh, and, and you can still bring Jesus onto that total blank person, right? And you can still put it on Facebook. Maybe you aren't the most pleasant person on Facebook. Maybe you are the one that picks fights. Why not for a change just put something great on there? And go ahead and pick fights, but keep putting those great things in there. Amen? It's your choice. But we can do great things in the presence of God. It is time to branch out like never before. Uh, and one way is social media. How many would you say yes? You guys are really hard to turn over this belief. <laughs> Say, oh, my Facebook is for personal use only. Well, yeah, but who personal to you? Is Jesus personal to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, share with that one friend then. You know what God told me last Sunday, and he was sharing it with me? He says, what would happen if you lose everything you built here? What, 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 what would you do if people just start coming here? And you only have five people left that come on Sunday. You know what God said? You better do what you're called to do. I called I call you to speak to five or a thousand. It doesn't matter. I told you to speak. 
I told you to heal. I called you to that no matter what kind of people there are. That's hard because financially it's almost impossible. But the fact is I got to do what I called to do. I'm branching out no matter what. What about you? It doesn't matter if you have one person on Facebook or one person on Twitter or Instagram. Actually, Instagram is the way to go with young people out here. And I, I'm trying. There, there, is, there is tremendous amount of clicks on pictures compared to words. It's what are you doing to reach out? Now, that's just one step I'm talking about today, but we're going to talk about different things too, not just social media. We're talking about the reaching out today, but we're talking about who are you? Who are you in this world? Have you ever thought of yourself who we are in this world? Are we a person that hides ourselves, or are we a person that reveals ourselves? Are we a person that feels so uh, unworthy that we hide in who we are and, and hide and say that we're not worthy enough to serve? We're not worthy enough to do something? Are we that person that just kind of hides all the time? But that's not who we're called to be. We're called to be somebody in this world. We're not even called just to sit in church and just have a religious movement going on. We're not just called to do that. We're called to be a church in the world. We're called to be the people of God in the world. Amen? We're not just called to be church. We're called to be church in the world. Amen? This building is in the world. We are here to fulfill ourselves so we can do something in the world. Amen? It's time to branch out like never before. It's time to be who we are called to be in the world. Let's just read Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. Before this, he's talking about blessed is he that's poor, blessed is he that is this, that, and this, and everything. And basically, whatever you are, you are blessed. Like, <laughs> if you're poor, you're blessed. If you speak, if you get persecuted for my name's sake, you're blessed. Some people say, no, I'm not blessed. I feel hurt. No, but you're blessed. If you, whatever you are, whatever place you're in, either you're in a poor state or you're in a place of persecution or you're in a place of this or in a place of that, you are blessed. God says so. Jesus says you are blessed no matter what. You might be a total person that's off the cuff and you just are not grabbing hold of his presence. And you're still blessed. We're blessed. Everybody say we're blessed. blessed. Believe it. Grab a hold of it. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. The only person that condemns you is you. Or different people. <laughs> but God doesn't condemn. Amen? Uh, I, get, I, I just thought of that. You know, sometimes I feel guilty myself and I condemn myself for what I did or what I should have done and what I didn't do. Then I find different people just join me and condemn me with that sometimes, right? <laughs> you should have done that. You should have done this. Why didn't you run after that person? Why didn't you go talk to that person before they did that? Why did <sighs> I only have two legs. I'm not a horse. <laughs> I can only run so far. And guess what? I get tired. What about you? There's a time of rest this year. I'm telling you, there's change happening that's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind what's happening. Are you ready to be blown away? Yes. It's time to blow away in the presence of God. It, it is, yeah, let's just get to scripture here because otherwise you think I'm just talking out of myself and not, you know, I can prove to you it's in the Bible. Anyway, here we go. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, which is translated the world. You are salt of the world. Everybody say, you're not salt of the church. No, you're salt of the world. Yeah. So sometimes we want to be the salt of the church. We, we come to church on Sundays and maybe sometimes Wednesdays and sometimes this day and, so, and we feel oh, holy <laughs> and we feel good. <laughs> and then we go out there and we are a, a, a rotten whatever. You know, we just do things that we shouldn't do, right? But, but I got that holy moment going, you know. We, we, we get that way, don't we? We get kind of this going thing. You, you should have that holy moment going, but keep that holy rolling, okay? You got to flow and be a holy roller. Amen? I'm just making up as I go here. I hope you're okay with that. I'm going to flow with the Holy Spirit leads me. Yes. I am for sure preaching more than you're talking back. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Let's talk a little bit. You know, but while you're taking in, just say, yes. You know, how, you know the best way to learn is to talk aloud. You, it's cool. You, you hear this. I, I, I used to do math, and I still do it sometimes, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You do this and you say, 14 times 7. You say it out loud, right? Equals, I don't know. I'm not going to figure that out right now. <laughs> I can figure it out. <laughs> but I, I, then, then my whole message will be based on that. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm sure there's somebody that has figured it out because they're just that kind of person. Tell me what it is. Anybody? 14, huh? 98, see? There we go. Now, that is true. That's what I'm talking about church, is when the church can answer the pastor's question when he can't figure it out himself. That's called church. That's when we're doing it together. Amen? That happens often here because I just make mistakes often. But just be released. Be ready. I, I have some new wine in me. You might, I might also just get drunk here, okay? In the Holy Spirit. It's just going to, hallelujah, it's going to happen. Why don't you just drink with me? Why don't you just enjoy the presence with me today and just say, you know what? There's something new. Ha you know what? I don't want to become religious. What about you? So we've got to keep ourselves moving. Keep ourselves moving. Uh, and, the, and, and my doctor said I'm supposed to move my legs a lot, so that's why. You know, like, yeah, I literally, they say I've got to exercise. So I'm going to get excited for Jesus. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to exercise. Amen? <laughs> yeah. If you need exercise, just stand up and go like this. Hallelujah. You know, you just kind of, come on. Yeah. Why not do it all at once? I mean, I walk more than when I preach, so I should be preaching every day. I would get great exercise. Yeah, just need some weights while I do this. It says, you are the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the world. But if the salt has lost its flavor, uh, with what will you be salted? See, the thing is that the Lord Jesus himself talking, he says, you're the salt of the world, but if you lose your flavor, what does it lose your flavor? Is? To be foolish in God's kingdom. That's what this losing flavor means. Or savior, in the King James it says savior. Uh, save, I can't pronounce it, so I'm going to say flavor again. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as you lose your flavor, what this means is a place of being foolish. It's being, f to prove a person of a thing to be foolish. It is it's to, to become tasteless in the word of God. It is, if you lose your flavor, if you lose your relationship, you become tasteless in who Jesus is in you. You need to be salted. You need to, you need to bring forth that excitement of Jesus. You, you can't become religious. Don't give yourself time to sit here and become religious, okay? I'm trying hard not to do, but you can make yourself religious. Don't do that. Get excited for Jesus. Get that taste going. Get those taste buds going for Jesus. Get that hunger going. Amen? Don't, don't lose it. Don't lose the revelation. Don't let the enemy sift you like wheat. Don't let that happen. Amen? We've got to get, grab a hold of that place who we are. We can't be salt of the earth if we lost our flavor. It doesn't work. It's like dead salt. It's like, and you know what? If you don't do nothing with yourself, salt gets bad. Especially sea salt does. It loses its flavor, right? It means that you have to be active at all times to be tasteful at all times. Amen? Be active at all times to be tasteful at all times. These things I want you to write down so I can tweet them later, okay? Whoever's taking notes from me here. Somebody take notes from me. <laughs> Whoever does that, then tell me, hey, this I said that so I can tweet it. Um, I, I sit at my Twitter there all day and say, what can I write? And I find out when I preach, I say so many things, and I can't remember what I all said. So, so maybe I just need to listen to my own messages over and over again, and we'll get it. But get, grab a hold of these things is that when you don't have flavor, and you don't have taste, then you become religious. Then you're not there for the world no more. You're just there for yourself. When you're not there helping somebody else, you're just helping yourself. You can help yourself better if you help somebody else. Because when you're encouraged of help, then you can receive the help. You can't receive what you don't sow. So do something that you can do so you can receive more of what you need. Amen? Do you want salt? You can give it out so it keeps filling, so it keeps tasteful. Amen? Yes. And then it says, if it is then good for nothing when it's flavorless, it's good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. It might be only good for icy roads then. That's it. <laughs> you might be able to go on the sidewalk with your salt, and it might be good that somebody might just walk by you enough that they don't slip. But the fact is that they're not getting nothing out of it. They're just sitting there being religious with you, and they're sitting there on maybe on good ground because you put all the salt that they're trampling on there. But that's all. There's no slipping going on. There's no, no challenges going on. You're just sitting there, and you're just becoming a good religion. Hallelujah. Well, maybe not hallelujah to that, but that's what people would say. So let's go on. Verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill can't be hidden. We are the light. You know what? We are the salt that can be trodden, but the one thing about the light, it cannot be hidden. Salt can lose its flavor, but light can't be lost. Only way it can be is covered up. You are the light of the world. You have no choice if you're a Christian. It's, are you hiding yourself under a bushel? 
Are you hiding yourself under a basket? What are you doing? You have a light no matter what. You are the light of the world, which is the city it's located. And the word located and translated, and I'm using the web Bible, the world English Bible today. And uh, it says to be appointed. I am located. I'm appointed on this hill to shine for the world. I'm appointed. You are appointed. Let everybody say, we are appointed. I'm appointed to shine. Hallelujah. We're going to shine on this. And you know what? It's not fun shining on the hill when everybody sees you because it's vulnerable. Ah, they see every little bit of me. We get kind of excited, so we hide because we, we, we feel unworthy in certain areas, and God says, get over it. There's a lot of other people that are not perfect. They're shining their light, so shine your light. Amen? Oh, are we ready to be to the world who we're designed to be? Are we ready to branch out? And, you know, a branch... Simply has a branch. Oh, man, I, I wish I could speak Sunday's message. No, man, I mean, you guys would go way crazier than you are right now. I, I, I guarantee it. You'd be stomping and standing on your head right now. <laughs> because they're, oh, 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 yeah. I'm getting excited. I can't contain myself because I have to plan everything out because I have so much messages from the conferences. And guess what? A lot of it didn't even come from conferences. A lot of it just got, came from getting away. A lot of it just came from being doing nothing. You ever just look, look at a ladybug or something and you got a revelation from it? Yeah. <laughs> That's what doing nothing is. You just kind of look at the stars. You look at a bird and say, wow, he tweaks. That sounds like this. And you get a revelation of something so simple, right? God, God speaks to you through calm and still voices sometimes. Sometimes you just need to remove yourself from your busyness and just hear his voice. Amen? And so a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be talking about the next couple of weeks is not just based on conference, but it's also based on calming down and hearing the God for today. There's things happening in let go, let God ministry in the next little while. It's just simply because of calming down and hearing his voice. And hearing him to move forward in an amazing way, in a powerful way. Amen? He says, uh, you're not a light of this. You're appointed to, and you're, you can't. It's a, it doesn't just say you won't be hidden. It says you can't be hidden. You can't. Everybody say can't. I'm looking at you all, and you're all shining right now. You have no choice. I see you. You have absolutely no choice. You can have done this worst thing today. I still see you. I still see the glory in you. I still see purpose in you. I still see God's giftings in you. I still see that. I don't care what you did. I don't, I'm looking at the light. I'm looking at the light. We're like a candlestick. The fact is, one candle can't shine very far, but a church together can shine a very far distance. Amen. I can, with one candle, I can lead one person to church. They can follow me. Come on, I'm it lights right here. And I can lead them. But when they come into the church, all of a sudden the whole room lightens up. All of a sudden the whole presence of God lightens up. All of a sudden, whole oh, glory is coming because of that. This felt good. I felt cared for. I have relationship, this little candle. But when you come into the fullness of the light of the church, when you come with all the candles joined together in one candlestick, and they go, ho, ho, I didn't know this was this good. Hallelujah. I see more than ever. You kind of slowly put him into the brightness of who Jesus is. Amen? You, you, what would happen if you would walk around with a floodlight all day? <laughs> You'd irritate people. Candles are way more romantic. <laughs> Candles are way more attractive. Wouldn't you agree? Come on. Yeah, come on, agree. Go say yes. Yeah. <laughs> people that watch on video, these people said yes because they wanted to say it. It's not because I forced them to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what happens if I come with a bright light? It, it, it's, no, it's, it, it's just going to irritate you. If I would just come to you and just kind of shoot everything and every thing that, and I would just expose you and I would bring all negativity in front of everybody, what would that do? That's way too much light. Even though it's truth, it's just way too much. It would break somebody. But when I bring a candle, it brings relationship. When I have a candle like dinner with my wife, it brings relationship. When I have kind of like dinner with Jesus, it brings relationship. When I bring somebody with a small light, it brings a place of trust because they kind of enter into your sphere of influence. They can't enter in your sphere of influence. They can't see your light unless if they're close to you. You got to start getting close to the world, getting close to the people that you want to see change. You got to start reaching out and branching out in the presence of God. Amen? And it's time for a great thing. So he says, uh, you can't be hidden. This word says, you can't 
escape notice. <laughs> be hidden. You, you can't escape. You're going to be noticed. And people say, well, I can't be noticed. Huh? I got to be humble. No, you, yeah, be humble, but be noticed while you're being humble. Like, show off your humbleness if you have to. Like, just do something, right? To be, <laughs> I'm humble, but here I am, God. Humble doesn't mean hide. Humble means that you serve him. You don't, you don't serve yourself. That's what humble means, right? Humble is not, not about hiding myself. It's not about covering up myself. It's about bringing Jesus in my life and letting him shine out of me. That's what humble is. And guess what happens when you let Jesus shine out of you? You're going to be noticed. You're going to be noticed and say, I need this guy on my team, man. <laughs> and I already have him on my team. I, I need this guy. I need, oh, well, there's something good here. I'm going to, because we notice something, amen? So it's time not to be hidden. You can't escape notice. You can't escape it. You're going to be known once you say yes to Jesus. And when you truly say yes to Jesus, you're going to be noticed. You're going to try to hide from people and they're going to still notice you. The devil's going to notice you more. Everything's going to notice you more. You might as well just join the, bay, uh, the wagon of Christians and join them because you're going to be safer there than trying to not to be noticed. Because when you say yes to Jesus, everything that is against you will start nipping at you. But when you come into the presence of Jesus and you come into the presence of the church and the presence of who God is and the presence of the people that want to be with you as a family, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be having an easy life. The Bible says my yoke is easy. The yoke is not something you walk by yourself. It's a yoke that's attached to something, okay? A yoke is something that is walking with something and giving power to walk with you. That's what a yoke is, amen? Jesus has this yoke on us, and we're going to walk into that place. Oh, boy, I'm, <laughs> you guys doing okay? Yes. Even if you're not okay, just keep saying yes just so I can finish this off, okay? Just kidding. Neither do you, do, you, uh, do you light a lamp and put it under a measuring basket, but on a stand, and it shines for the household to see. Um, it shines in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that you may see your good works and the glory of the Father which who is in heaven. It is time to let, your, let the glory of God shine you. Uh, be, when you shine your light, it is delicate. Light is delicate. I'm going to just share with you with what light is. It's a, it's a place of delicacy. It's a place of uh, extreme delicate. It's, uh, the light is something that is a place of Jesus. It is also a place of truth, knowledge, together with a spiritual purity associated with it. It's uh, the power of knowledge and purity and truth together. And then it's, it's delicate. It's not forceful. It's not, it's not irritatable. It's not... Oh no! Don't come close to me. Uh, don't not like some people just are, are are right above you and just wanna wanna do everything they can to show their giftings off or whatever they may do. But if you don't feel that, if you feel feel that kind of brightness and say, Oh, I, I, I'm not now. I'm not ready for this. Uh, uh, and you gotta walk with that candlelight. Amen. Okay, we're gonna go to the next scripture here. I want us to understand. Who are we to this world? Let's never ever be contained behind walls. But let's be who we are out there at all times. Let's branch out all the time. Start bringing people, start branching out. I'm talking as on behalf of Let Go That God Ministry, and if you're part of this and you, you believe in this ministry, start reaching out and start pulling in. Start branching out so that people can come to a safe place to be healed, so people can come and receive the word and revelational knowledge of who he is. Amen? When we do that, it's going to change the lives of people. We branch out. We go to work, and we start sharing our experiences. We start sharing our testimonies. It's going to change the people forever. Amen? Now, I'm going to take a twist on this turn here. Matthew 14, on this twist on this message. Matthew 14, 16 to 21. Um, how do we get out there and be like Jesus was? Jesus went to the mountain, and he had over 5,000 men and plus women and children there. 5,000 men is very little because most of those people had eight or nine children. That was a culture. The culture was, they had, a lot of them had a lot of children. And the women, some of them had more than one wife, maybe. Who knows? But the fact is there was a lot of people, right? It wasn't just 5,000. That was just a reference point because of, because of the culture they used men as a reference point because of the culture they lived in, because of the kings and everything that was there, that culture that was there. And so he... He, he cares for us, he, and he brings forth us. 
And, and I want to bring forth of how who we are, and this passage I'm going to bring forth maybe different than I normally have, okay? And just walk with me in a spiritual sense with this passage for now, okay? You might go and say, oh, I don't know if that means that. Don't worry about it right now. I'm just sharing my heart right now. And this, this scripture spoke to my heart on this circumstance, okay? It spoke to my heart to bring this out today for you. So we go, and verse 6 says, but right after they were sitting there and they were getting tired and they said, well, Pete, and the, the disciple says, we got to send these guys home. They're getting hungry. They're getting kind of wild. And when, you, when, the, when these men get hungry, they get grumpy. Like, there's just, well, I'm just paraphrasing. But like, there, there is some big issues here. There, we need to deal with this because there's some growling stomachs here. I'm not sure if they're going to gonna contain themselves or uh, whatever. And then, and then Jesus said to them, they don't need to go away. Sometimes we sit there and we're hungry and we say, God, I, I can't stay here anymore. I, I, I'm frustrated. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to go to Subway. I'll just use the example. If you do that, don't get guilty right now. Oh, boy. What did I just do? Yeah. I'm just going to go there for a moment and sit there. And, and Pastor George speaks loud enough I can hear it through the walls. <laughs> Amen? I'm trying to correct my mistake there. But anyway. Um, but they said, you know what? You don't need to go away. You don't need to go away. Uh, I can't offer you bread or something. I don't have fish here, so you probably have to go to Subway. But, uh, I don't ha but anyway, when we go into this place of... Uh, I'm just going to stop digging that hole for a minute there. And, and he says, they don't need to go away. Give them something to eat. It's just like, did you just hear us? We had no food. We just have a little bit here. Sometimes our hunger gets in our way to hear God, the voice of Jesus. Wouldn't you not agree? When we don't set ourselves aside to fast... And when we get hungry, we get irritated. These people get irritated, and Jesus was doing a great work at that time. He was doing something great, and he said, we're not going to leave these guys hanging. They traveled, they walked with us, they came here. And so sometimes we can't hear the voice is because our nurture in our own bodies are not fulfilled, okay? Sometimes we just need a granola bar. I'm getting somewhere with this, don't worry. Sometimes we just need some... Yeah, don't, don't, don't use the noisy stuff. That irritates me a little bit. But, you know, it's soft. No, just kidding. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. I'll be loud enough that I won't hear it. But then, you know, it's so cool for that one scripture to see that Jesus takes care of the natural so that yeah, he can see the supernatural. He takes care of the natural so that these people could receive. My heart is to take care of the natural. I want an excellent place so people feel they can be here. I want to have the right lights. I want to have the right everything. I want to fulfill the natural so that you can come here and receive everything you ever desire to receive. That the, all the irritation of this place removes. The wooden chairs sometimes. Uh, some people actually like them better, so maybe we'll just paint them black. But, uh, <laughs> but, but whatever it is, right? Sometimes the irritation of our human body doesn't allow us to receive certain things. We do not agree. And Jesus cares about the natural. He cares about you being comfortable. He cares about you being in the excellence of his presence. And he cares about your stomach. <laughs> so he, he goes and when he takes care of natural people, branch out. Because guess what happened here? I love this. What happened here is this, is that when they had the bread and the five loaves, Jesus asked them to divide and branch out in 50 groups. You there, you there. You go there. No chaos. He, there's the greatest miracles that are going to happen here, and he put order in the miracle. He put order in the miracle. We don't see that today very often. That's why people run away from churches, <laughs> because they don't see order in the miracles sometimes. But Jesus puts order in the miracles. Nowhere, you, you can read all over scripture, he puts order in the miracles. He, he goes and makes sure that Pete puts his boat out of the water sometimes before he can speak. He puts order in everything. He puts a platform to do the miracles, right? He, he platforms himself. He, and we need to do that too so that we are received from the world, okay? If we platform ourselves and we put things in professional order and we put things into the place that we are going to see more anointing, we're going to see more re re revival. I can't talk to you because I'm going to speak in tongues soon. But it's just, that, that, that's going to happen, okay? So when we put order in God, he puts order in what we do. And you're going to see the greatest miracles ever happen when we do that. Amen? It's a powerful thing to branch out, but it's a powerful thing to understand his power, to 
to understand his anointing, then they, t they told them, there's only five loaves and two fish. And there's another story about seven loaves and some fish. They don't say how many fish. Uh, but seven loaves, it's five loaves and two fish. Now here, we're going to go get crazy a little bit, I think. He said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. And so sometimes we got to take our lack. God, I don't have enough money to pay the rent for the, to this month. Or I don't have enough money to pay my mortgage. I don't have enough to do, pay for food. Whatever, right? We take our lack. Sometimes we take our lack and we go and go to our computer and we try to crunch numbers. <laughs> nope, doesn't work out. And we keep doing that. We keep trying to figure things out ourselves. But they take the lack and bring it to Jesus so he can bless the lack. And so that when we go out the world, now let's even not look at food, now let's look at ourselves. We lack. There's no baskets of revelations left after you spoke. There's no, no fish. Or, uh, the fish, we represent the fishermen. Like, there's no bread of life left in me. There's no, there's no ability to grab a hold of the people for the kingdom of God no more. I lack God. I need more revelation. I need more fish in my life. I need more bread in my life. I need more life in my life. <laughs> life in my life, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Jesus will multiply. If, and what multiplying is branching out because what you had is just enough for yourself and you were kind of greedy about that. You had those five loaves and two fish for just for your family. You had no expectation to share it. Oh God, thank you. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. Bring those loaves to me. Bring those fish to me, Jesus says. God, you, you ask me to give everything up that I have for you? Uh, uh, I just, I, I, we would have had a really good meal, me and my wife and my kids. But now you're asking me to, to, to give and branch out to 5,000 people? Coco. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure that guy thought he would, okay, God, if you want to bless my food, go for it. But that won't be enough to feed them. Sometimes we feel that in our spiritual life. We feel that we can't branch out because we feel... Uh, I don't have what it takes yet. I just have a little bit, God. I don't have what it takes to get out there. I, I, I got I to gotta take care of myself first. Me first. I gotta, Lord, bless me first. Me. I can't do nothing out there. I'm not blessed yet. What can I give if I'm not blessed? Just give what you have and I will bless it. I will multiply it. Verse 19 says, He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. I was ahead of myself before. I had my head <laughs> sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and two fish, and he, and he looked up, and he blessed and broke the loaves. And so the biggest thing is this. When we come to Jesus, he will always have revelational knowledge, meaning that when we come to him, when he blesses this word, it will multiply. When he blesses who you are, it will multiply. When the bread of life, that bread of life, if you come to him with your life, it will multiply. It, it, it will come forth. You will, your purpose, your destiny, your talents, it will multiply. You have no choice but it to multiply when God's blessing is on it. And then he said, fish. I, I see the bread as our, the bread of life to be fulfilled of his life. How many of you need more revelational knowledge of bread? How many want just more of him? How many want that? How many want more of him? We need to take that what we have in ourselves and we need to say, God, I'm ready to branch out. Take me and bless me and multiply me right now. The only way it was multiplied if he was willing to share the food. It was not multiplied for yourself. It was only multiplied after the fact. And the fact is that after the fact, you have baskets of blessings and revelations to take home, meaning that you were not suffering with giving that up. Amen? It means that if I would just give what I have already and let God bless it and let the people enjoy it, that means I will go leave that service with more than I had. But I'm not willing to do that because it's all about me. I can't risk it, God. I can't risk that extra five bucks or whatever it is or that extra prayer or I can't risk that um, intimidation or whatever I'm going to get out of that. Sometimes when you talk to someone, you feel bad after you do it. Have you ever done, said something, and you, said, and you dream about it all day? And you talk and say, my goodness, how in the world did I do that? I shouldn't have texted that text. I should have not sent it. How do I get it back? 
because you say something and then you want to try to retrieve it because then we feel so worthless sometimes. We feel like we just can't do it. And then when we do it, we, we get anxious about it. We get anxiety about it. And, and we just sit there and wonder why we said what we said or what we did. You ever there? Almost done, I think. Probably not. <sighs> but the fish multiplied the bread first. Then he took the fish. The fish is a place of multiplying and branching out. The fish is, Jesus has called us to be fisher of men. He's, he, I don't think that Jesus just did this for the sake of showing a big miracle, but he did it to show us who he was. How many of you want to be fishers of men? How many of you want that fish to multiply around you? How many want people to multiply around you for the sake of Jesus Christ? I want that multiplication to happen. I want to take forth what I have. I take let go, let go of this right here. And Lord, we just lift it up to you. And multiply it. And multiply this. Multiply this. Multiply this. And people say, well, there's a lot of other churches, but there's a lot of people that need this church that don't go to church. There's a lot of people that need this ministry that don't have this ministry. So we can ask for multiplications, can't we? Why not get more fisher of men? Let's, let's become that fisher of men. I'm also preferring to women when I say men, just so you know. But it's just that fisher. Multiplying, branching out. Then he says this. He says, and he was looking up to heaven. And this word looking up is he received sight. Some, okay, come. We're breaking the bread, and he fed it. But first what he did is he took the fish, and he looked up. Sometimes we forget to look up. Sometimes we just, we go through protocol. And protocol is good if you look up. But sometimes we just go through, hmm, I'm supposed to confess this five times. Okay, I'm going to confess. Protocol. I'm going to read this five times and then God's going to change my life right in front of my eyes. But looking up means this. I received revelation. I relieved, I, he lifted up and he received insight from God. That's what it means. You can say it yourself in the, in the Greek. It talks about this place of looking up. It's a place of receiving sight. To look up, to recover what was lost. You hold up saying, God, I want to recover what was lost. I want, their in, I want your sight in my eyes. I want to see what you want me to do with this so that it will multiply and prevail in my life. Amen? So when we walk in that place, it will receive the sight. We, we will look up. We can't just take the baskets and believe that God says, okay, the promise of God, now it's a relationship with God. Here I am, God. I give what I have, and I just have better enough for myself, and you know that, and not even enough for my family sometimes. But God, I give it to you. I give you... And then he's going to give you sight. He's going to multiply you. He's going to give you revelational knowledge. He's going to give you ability to fulfill that. Amen? Then verse 20 says, Then they all ate and were filled. And they took 12 baskets full of what was remained, left over, and, broken piece, and the broken pieces. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. 5,000 men were ate off of the blessing. They didn't eat off of the bread and fish. They ate off of the revelation. They didn't eat off of the bread and the fish. They ate out of the miracle of Jesus Christ. They didn't eat off of the boy's bread. That was just a seed of what God can do. If you're willing to seed what you have, God will bless in major ways. Amen? What happens? God, we want to bless these people. I want to reach out. Lord, I'm the light. I need your revelation. When God speaks, things happen. Then leftovers happen. When God speaks, then there's 12 baskets of revelations left. That means there's a full foundation there. There's a whole foundation built there, full of your word, full of your extra sin in Jesus' name. I could enjoy myself. I was filled with the word of God. And there's yet crumbs to hand out. Amen? God is filling us today. He says, I'm going to fill you, and when you lift your eyes up to me, and when you allow me to bless who you are, and you're going to allow me to bless your bread and your life and your fish, you're going to see your ability to branch out like never before. You're going to see the multiplication in your life when you do that. Amen? You know, you have time because now, now I'm just going to talk revelation that I feel that I need to talk. You okay with that? It's, I, I don't like using this word, but I'm going to start using it because God told me to, so... It's time to shift. It's time to shift. You know, this, this, by the way, I stole from him, just so you know. 
but I, I, it hit me and ma I made it my own. And if you ever listen to him, you might hear him say this, and that's how he's kind of repeating what he said. Yeah, I am, okay, just so you know. But there's revelation in this, okay? Are you ready for this? Just ready for this. Sometimes we want an automatic instead of a standard. We just want things to happen automatically. We just want to go on, a, go on a wagon that just automatically does things for us. But God says, you are called to shift. You're never called to stay the same. You're never called to do that. You're called to shift. But what happens with a car, we go in first, and if, you, and, and if you drive the bigger trucks with the farm trucks and stuff like that, you have to speed shift. And sometimes the first one you clutch it, but if you clutch every one of those things, you eventually wear out your system. You've got to speed shift. You've got to shift at the right time and the right speed. And God is calling you to shift at the right timing and at the right speed today. He's not saying, don't go, grind yourself all the time. Well, you know what? I have heard a lot of people, they just don't care. The, the clutch is worn out, and I go, <laughs> there's so many of you that are worn out, and you're just grinding away. My God, I'm moving no matter what you say. <laughs> I'm going. In the meantime, we're losing our bearings. <laughs> Boy, that just flowed right in there. We're losing the gears. We're losing our abilities. We're losing our power because we're not using our system right. But God says it's time to shift. Stop grinding your gears and listen to my timing and listen to the speed. Learn my voice. Learn when I say when. You're in first gear and God says your time. And there's some people that are ready to go into the sixth gear. But the fact is, every time you come to the curve, you've got to learn how to shift down in your life too. And if you don't shift down, you can't shift up. And so you have to choose to learn how to shift your gears because sometimes you can't give it all. Sometimes you have to give it less. Sometimes you just give it all. You, you leave it in year six. I'm talking about a car that I have in my mind. Like on a truck, it would be 13 gears. But, but the fact is, uh, let's just keep it simple with gear six being the highest one. Uh, uh, and we're sitting in the gear six and, and we see this curve coming. But we're not willing to let go, and we're not willing to shift down. We say, no, God, I have all your power. Hallelujah. <laughs> woo -hoo! And we're going to go there, and we're just driving around this corner, and we're slowing down. What happens in gear six when you have to slow down? It comes out. It just kills you if you don't shift down. And that's how we live as Christians. I got the power, and we just driving on six gear full speed. And that curve in our life comes in there, and we just got to go for it because, no, I'm not going back to where I was. I'm not shifting down, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we do that? Come on. And then we wonder why it doesn't work. The thing's not moving. God is not moving today. My goodness, if my life held still. Yeah, just put it back in first. That's why it's there for. Get back to the basics sometimes. Get back to where it works for you. Then shift back up, and it won't take you long to get there if you learn the timing and the speed of God. Are you ready to go there? Come on. We've we, we got to be yo-yos. We can't be straight drivers. We've got to go up and down in our life because that's what it is about. We've got to go back down to get our strength back. We've got to go back to the basic of His blood. We've got to go back to the basic work of His cross. And then we've got to go back up to the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We've got to get back. Sometimes we just, we just got to go back to the cross. Get back to the first basics of Jesus Christ so that you can shift in your life. Then don't grind it. Listen to his voice. And he said, oh, it's time to go. Whoo, yeah. And you know what? When you learn how to drive a standard, it's, it's efficient. It's more efficient than any automatic in your life. See, the thing is, automatic is maybe un... Uh, you don't have to think a lot. But the fact is, when you shift in life, it is, it is way better for your economy in your life. When you're automatic in life, it just kind of shifting saves you a little bit. When you shift, you have more power, you have more abilities, you have, you have your choices, not somebody that makes choices for you. I have an automatic vehicle, and I have the ability to make it shift. And, uh, you know, if I want to be a hot rod guy, you know, a cool guy, and, and just kind of go, you just kind of go down and you just start shifting it. And you let that thing rev. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you got the power going. And, and I'm telling you, uh, sometimes when we are full power in God, we waste more gas. 
And there are times to do that, to do speedy things. But there's times that we have to slow down so that we can think again what he wants us to do. Sometimes we drive so fast, we don't even know what God is about no more. Sometimes we just need to slow down and see what God has done. Hallelujah. You've got to count your victories. And there's times to go for it. There's times to just say, hallelujah, he did this for me. Amen? Are you ready to shift? It is time to shift. Some of you are going to have to shift down. Some of you need to shift up. Some of you guys have been going too fast. Some of you need to shift down today. You need to be there for the world, and you can't be there at high speed. And some of you guys are behind. You need to speed up. Catch up with the crowd. Come on. Let's go for it. Amen. Let's sing relentless.